I'm Liz, I'm Lisa. I'm Wes. And we're looking at my system because I'm going to play back. We're looking at my first Castle Panic by Fireside Games. So you guys may remember Jason, he was in some of our earlier videos and he was a little bit smaller and I thought I would bring him in today because my first Castle Panic is geared towards younger audiences, where's the age on it, four and up it says. Um, Jason, how old are you? Two. How old are you going to be soon? Three. That's right. So Jason is going to be three in a few months, but I thought, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty smart for his age, so he could probably handle this. And the biggest thing to handle this game is knowing shapes and colors. And really the shapes are circle, triangle, square, and red, blue, and green. As long as your kids have those down, they should be able to handle this. Handle this. The only other real challenge is just the attention span to like sit there and focus in this game long enough and not just start playing with everything, which we've played this a few times now, right? Right. Do you like it? Yeah. And that's the biggest challenge that we found is that Jason will get distracted and he'll want to start like playing with the monsters or just like tearing the castle apart. But you know, it's geared towards him, so that's not that big a deal. Jason, what did you like about this game? Getting monsters. You like getting the monsters? Yeah. And what shapes did we look at? And how do we catch the monsters? Got a new card. You got new cards? Yeah. So basically how you play the game is it it's kinda like Candyland almost. It's about that level of complexity where the monsters every turn draw out and there's a few special monsters that go to the front of the line or that push everybody forward or things like that. And you're each gonna have a card and you have to match the card to whatever color and shape the monster is on. Now if you played the regular Castle Panic, that's gonna be pretty familiar, but instead of having like colors and like zones of like archers and knights and all that fun stuff, it's just the color and shape of the space that they're on. And then you play a card that matches the color and shape that the monster's on, and you catch that monster. The game is over if you either catch all the monsters on the board or if they destroy your castle. Now if the monsters get all the way here, down the board, without catching them, and they move forward again, the first one will destroy that. But whenever they destroy a piece, you catch them. But if another one gets through and bumps over, he blows up your big castle and then the game's over because you don't have a castle anymore. There are cards in the deck that let you rebuild this wall, again, just like regular Castle Panic. And we've won a few and we've lost a few, so it is, you know, a pretty good co-op where it's not just you're gonna win every time. And I do think that's really cool to teach kids even at this age, like, up, oh, we lost. Even though, Jason, do you understand what losing is? No. No? Yeah. So at this age, they don't really get what losing is, but, you know, as they grow up and as they learn, it's, it's a good concept to know, like taking turns, losing, that's all great things to teach your kids. What you got there, Jason? I got this. What is that? I don't know. You don't know? Is that the castle? Yeah. Are you going to break it? No. You're probably going to break it. As far as who this game is for, um, I definitely think that Jason is on the lower end. You know, he, he's almost three, so he's definitely moving into that sweet spot. I first got this game a few months ago, and honestly, even then, he had a really hard time grasping it. And not the really the concept of the game because it, you guide them a lot. You know, I'd say, okay, what color and shape is this guy on? All right, the green the green square. Do we have any cards that are green squares? And he'd tell me yes or no, and sometimes he's wrong, but you know, you, you help him out. Um, but again, his biggest challenge was just the attention span of we're gonna sit here and then, careful, gentle. Really the gameplay takes like 10 to 15 minutes, so it's not that long to focus, but for, you know, especially two, that can be just long enough, especially if your kids are on like screens all day and they're constantly stimulated. Jason, what's your favorite monster? Red. Red? Yeah. There are no red monsters in this game, but you like red monsters? Yeah. Yeah. And green ones. And green ones? And blue ones. Oh. And... 
No, any more colors. There's not any more colors? Okay. Now, I do think that saying four and up, I think that four is probably the upper limit for who's really going to enjoy this game. Once you get to five, I think it's going to be a little too basic. But once they get to that point, and especially if they've mastered this game, you may want to graduate into the full Castle Panic game because that game is also pretty simple. It's fully co-op. If they get this one and they're bored of it, I think that's the perfect time to move into that next level of game, which is really what this game is designed for. It's designed to be able to play games with your kids. Daddy. Yes? I play with dice. You want to play with dice? Yeah. This game doesn't have any dice. I think there's dice over there. You think there's dice over there? Yeah, I play with those dice. Okay. I'll be right back, okay? Stay yeah. here. So if you're looking for a game for your two to four year olds, I think that this is a great opportunity to bring them into the hobby, play a game with them, understand that it's going to be based on like helping them play the game and there's really no challenge for adults or even kids that are probably five and up. Yes? Get that one. We'll get that one in a minute, okay? Okay. Look at this. That's green. Oh. But if you are looking for a game in that sweet spot for like two to four years old, I think that this is kind of a slam dunk. You get to work on taking turns, you get to work on patience, you get to work on colors and shapes, and I, I don't know about you guys, but my kid has always wanted to play games, he wants to get into my games. As you can see, he's playing with my dice right now. If he can get into our studio, he's constantly pulling things off the shelf. His favorite games are Animal Plan Animal, Drop It, Anything with dice, he loves helping me unbox things. And having games that are like his, and that he knows like this is his game, and we can play this with him when he wants, and you know, starting his game collection now. So if that's something that you and your family needs, I think this game is really a slam dunk. Jason, is there anything else you want to say about this game? Yeah. What do you want to say about it? I'll just say some nerds. Well guys, if you are looking to pick this game up, which again, if you have young kids, I definitely recommend. I'm gonna put a purchase link in the description box down below. While you're down there, make sure you throw a comment, tell me what the, your favorite game is to play with your kids. Maybe we'll check it out. And while you're down there, subscribe and you'll never be bored. Finger guns, go. Who is your favorite person in Neverboard Gaming? The dice. The dice. Yeah. Hey, who else comes and plays board games here? Dog. Who? Uncle Tommy. Uncle Tommy. And who else? Aaron. And Mr. Aaron? Yeah. So between Daddy, Uncle Tommy, and Mr. Aaron, who's your favorite? Uncle Tommy. We'll work on that.